Recently, I've had a lot of questions about how much protein we need to eat daily to improve our bone health. So today, we're gonna talk about how much protein we actually need every day, and also the differences between animal-based proteins and plant-based proteins. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I'm also a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. And I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. I am on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures, and I am glad to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. So let's talk about protein. This has come to be something of a loaded topic in the world of bone health, and you likely hear all kinds of different information about how much protein you actually need. I'm gonna discuss different thoughts on protein and some of the reasons why different professionals have different prevailing beliefs. But first, let's talk about why we need protein. Our bones and our muscles are mostly made up of protein, and as we age, we tend to lose muscle mass, and with it, bone mass. As we age, one of the biggest threats to our being able to live independently is progressive muscle loss, which can become sarcopenia. When we lose muscle, we also lose bone, and that can leave us more fragile and likely to fall. Falls are the most common reason for entering assisted living or a nursing home and losing our independence. So muscle loss and the bone loss that follows is the main reason why protein is such an important nutrient to get right as we age and work to maintain our bone health. So did you know that older adults need more protein than they did when they were younger? What? This might seem a little counterintuitive. After all, older adults aren't necessarily running around on the playground playing hopscotch like their grandchildren. So it would make sense that they would then need a little bit less protein instead of more. But actually the opposite is true. This is because it's harder for older adults to absorb nutrients. According to a nutrition review performed in 2016 about protein and older adults, elderly adults are less responsive to the anabolic stimulus of low doses of amino acid intake compared to younger individuals. However, this lack of responsiveness in elderly adults can be overcome with higher levels of protein or essential amino acid consumption. Proteins are made up of amino acids. So in this quote, when researchers refer to amino acids, we are talking about protein. As we age, we need to consume more protein in order to help maintain our muscles and our bones. And just a side note here, it's also really important to engage in weight-bearing exercise to maintain our muscles as well. This brings us back to the question of how much protein is the right amount. So the Food and Nutrition Board has been setting the standards for the recommended daily amount since 1941. Their recommendation for daily protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight per day. This is equivalent to 0.36 grams per pound of body weight. The review of studies that I was just referring to actually acknowledges that there's a discrepancy in the recommended daily amount and what older adults actually need to maintain their muscle and bone mass. The recommended daily amount suggests only about a third of our calories should be coming from protein. This is not enough. Let's talk about the prevailing professional thoughts on protein consumption. At the extreme other end of the spectrum from the minimum recommended daily amount are some professionals who suggest that we should actually consume a full gram of protein for every pound of our ideal body weight. That's a lot of protein. You may find yourself asking, what's the theory behind eating so much and why would I do that? Essentially, a diet like this is a bodybuilding diet. People who are bodybuilding need a lot of extra protein to support their muscles. So keeping that in mind, when we're working to improve our bone mineral density, we are also bodybuilding to support our muscles that will then pull on our bones and increase our bone mass. 
but it's also unlikely that we are bodybuilding at the same level as what professional bodybuilders are doing. And this makes it unlikely that we actually need to consume one gram of protein for every pound of our actual body weight. So again, where does that actually leave us? I think the best answer to this is somewhere in the middle. I generally advise my clients to take their ideal body weight in pounds and then divide that amount in half. This amount in half is a good amount of protein to consume. I suggest that you create a range of protein consumption that you'd like to target daily. This amount might look like somewhere between half and three fourths. Let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Say a person weighs 120 pounds and this person's also comfortable with their weight. So this is their ideal body weight. Half of this weight would be 60 grams of protein. This is a good amount to target daily. If this person consumes an average of 20 grams of protein with every meal, then they've hit their target goal. Easy. A range for the person in our example might actually run between 60 and 90 grams of protein every day. This gives a good amount of flexibility with, minimum, with your minimum target amount. And this amount is not so high as to overload kidneys and to create problems for our bodies. But it also gives the additional protein that's necessary for building bones and muscles as we age. So here's another question. Does the kind of protein that we consume make a difference in improving bone health? The simple answer is yes, it does. We need to make sure that we're getting high quality proteins in our diets that include complete amino acid profiles. For a while, there was a theory floating around that consuming animal proteins would cause calcium to be lost from overloading the kidneys. This theory has actually been proved false. Overloading the kidneys is possible to do by consuming too much protein consistently over years. It doesn't happen easily. If you have kidney-related issues, then it's important to talk to your doctor about the potential for overloading kidneys and then to come up with a plan that personally works well for you. But the question remains, is it better to consume animal proteins or plant proteins for bone health? This is a complicated question that needs a very nuanced answer. First, just as no exercise program is ever gonna be suitable for everyone, it's also really important to recognize that not all diets are gonna be appropriate for everyone either. In my nutritional health coaching program, there was a really regular phrase that teachers used, and that phrase is that one person's food is another person's poison. Our bodies feel differently eating in different ways. Some of us need fewer saturated fats to protect our heart health, while others thrive on healthy proteins that contain saturated fats. Some of us eat a plant-based diet for religious or other value reasons, and those reasons need to be respected and worked with. It is possible to eat a plant-based diet and get high-quality amino acids, but it takes regular planning and work. It's not an easy thing to do, especially as we get older and our protein needs increase. There's a study that I'm gonna talk about that compares how people respond to different types of protein sources with bone health specifically. As I share the study findings, please know that if eating in this way does not align with your value system, I respect that and believe that careful planning, it is possible to get all of our essential amino acids on a plant-based diet. Studies are just starting to be done about how plant-based proteins affect bone health. And as more studies are performed, keep in mind that recommendations may change as scientific knowledge expands. In general, plant-based eating has been found to lower inflammation and to reduce the risk of developing chronic diseases. But these diets are also often low in both calcium and vitamin D, which then increases the risk for bone loss. In January of 2021, the Journal of Nutrition published a research study about the partial replacement of animal proteins with plant-based proteins and then measured their effects on bone turnovers. So the study included 107 women and 29 men with three different diets with different protein composition. The first group consumed a diet with 70% animal protein and 30% plant-based protein. Group two consumed a diet that was 50% animal protein with 50% plant protein. And the third group consumed 30% animal protein and 70% plant protein. 
Results from the study found that when a person moved from a mostly animal-based protein diet to a mostly plant-based protein diet, their bone turnover markers increased, meaning that their bodies began to break down bone faster than on a mostly animal-based protein diet. Researchers felt that this indicated that plant-based proteins were contributing to higher rates of bone turnover, or in other words, contributing to bone loss. With the study results, it's important to point out that the participants who were consuming higher percentages of plant-based proteins were also not consuming the recommended daily amounts of either calcium or vitamin D. Not having enough calcium and vitamin D could also have contributed to the higher rates of bone turnover, aka bone loss. This makes it especially important if you're choosing to eat a plant-based diet to track not only your essential amino acids, but also to make sure that you're getting sufficient calcium and vitamin D. If you're eating a diet with animal proteins, I also encourage you to make sure that you're getting enough calcium and vitamin D because this will help to protect your bones. Some of the best food sources of protein include turkey breast, fish, beef, beans, cottage cheese, soybeans, beef liver, black eyed peas, kefir, and mozzarella cheese. I actually have a link to a free protein guide in the video's description. The guide provides a quick review of what we covered in this video and a list of high protein foods with approximately how much protein is in a serving of each of these foods. This will give you a gauge of approximately how much protein you're consuming in meals. I hope that this information helps you to get the right protein in the right amount for your body. If you found this information helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And if you'd like to check out the studies that I referenced, those studies can be found in the description. I look forward to talking with you soon.